sorry for the ridiculously big question, but what idea in mathematics is most beautiful to you? We've talked about so many. The most beautiful idea in mathematics is the transfinite ordinals. These were the number system invented by Georg Cantor about counting beyond infinity. Just the idea of counting beyond infinity. I mean, you count through the ordinary numbers, the natural numbers, zero, one, two, three, and so on, and then you're not done because after that comes omega, and then omega plus one, and omega plus two, and so on. And you can always add one. And so, of course, after you count through all those numbers of the form omega plus n, then you get to omega plus omega, the first number after all those. And then comes omega plus omega plus one, and so on. You can always add one. And so you can just keep counting through the ordinals. It never ends. Eventually, you get to omega times three, omega times four, and so on. And then the limit of those numbers, the first number that comes after all those numbers, will be omega squared. And this one is the first compound limit ordinal, because it's a limit ordinal is one of these numbers, an ordinal, that doesn't have an immediate predecessor, like omega and omega times two, omega times three, those are all limit ordinals. But omega squared is a limit ordinal, but it's also a limit of limit ordinals, because the omega times three, omega times four, and so on, those are all limit ordinals that limit up to omega squared. And then, of course, you form omega squared plus one, and then omega squared plus two, and so on. And it never stops. And it's just absolutely beautiful and amazing. And furthermore, forms the foundation for these transfinite recursive constructions that came later, I mean, starting with the Cantor Bendixson theorem that I mentioned. Um, and uh, continuing with uh, the construction of the of the V hierarchy and Gödel's constructible universe is built uh, this way, and uh, Zermelo's proof of the well order principle using the axiom of choice is a transfinite recursive construction, and and so the idea of just counting past infinity is so simple and elegant, and has led to so much fascinating mathematics. Yeah, the infinity is not the end. And what about philosophy? What is the most beautiful idea in philosophy? So I, do, I have a foot in both fields, philosophy and mathematics. And in some contexts, I seem to be required to choose whether I'm a mathematician or a philosopher. I mean, my training is in mathematics, my PhD, all my degrees are mathematics. But somehow I turned myself into a philosopher over the years because my mathematical work was engaging with these philosophical issues. Um, and so when I went in New York, I had appointments first in mathematics only, but then eventually I was also joining the philosophy faculty at the Graduate Center. And when I went to Oxford for the first time, my main appointment was in philosophy, and that's also true now at Notre Dame, um, although I'm also a concurrent professor in mathematics. And I have math PhD students still and philosophy PhD students, and so I don't really care to decide whether I'm a mathematician or philosopher and my work is engaging with mathematics and with philosophical issues in mathematics and with plain philosophy and there's this ample region between these region between these two subjects so it's not necessary to choose I remember when I first went to Oxford and I told my daughter that I was going to become professor of philosophy in Oxford um, and she looked at me plaintively and said, uh, but, but Papa, you're not a philosopher. <laughs> because in her mind, you know, her father was the mathematician and mm -hmm. her mother was the philosopher because my wife, mm -hmm. Barbara, is a um, philosopher. Now also at Notre Dame, we're together there. And uh, okay, but I, fortunately, I don't really have to choose be between them. So you ask about the most beautiful idea in philosophy, and I would have to say that uh, I think it's the distinction between truth and proof, the one that we discussed mm -hmm. already. Um, it's it's so profound and gets at the heart of so many philosophical issues. I mean, of course, this is a distinction that's maybe born in mathematics or mathematical logic, but that's already already phil philosophical to a degree, and it's you know fundamentally a philosophical distinction. The truth is about the 
the nature of the world and the way things are. It's about objective reality in a sense. Whereas proof is about our understanding of the world and about how we come to know the things that we know about the world. Mm -hmm. And so to focus on proof is to focus on the interaction that we have with the objective reality. And okay, I'm talking about the reality of mathematics, not the physical world, because as I said, I live in the platonic realm and I interact with mathematical reality. And so proof is about the interaction uh, and how we come to know the facts that are true in this mathematical reality. Whereas truth is about what's really the case, sort of apart from our knowledge of it. And, um, and this is, I think, a, such a core way of, that I have of understanding the world and, uh, and the nature of logic and reasonings. And the gap between the two is full of fascinating mysteries, both in the Platonic realm, but also in the physics realm, and uh, I would even say in the, in the human psychology, sociology, politics, geopolitics, all of it. If you think about proof more generally, which is the process of discovery uh, versus the truth itself. And that's our journey, uh, whatever field we're in. Well, I, for one, am grateful for uh, <laughs> for how marvelous of a philosopher, mathematician, and human being you are. It's truly an honor to speak with you today. Well, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here, and thank you for inviting me.